Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Children of Deaf Adults, or better known as CODA, starring Amelia Jones, Marley Martin, Mal Matlin, I don't know if I said that wrong, please forgive me, Troy Kotzer, and Daniel Durant, directed by Sion Heater. Now, I this is the first two viewings I've had of this movie, and is it as good as, or deserving of the Best Picture trophy? Let's get into it and we'll find out. A mostly deaf family are sailors for a living to sell fish as we meet the Rossi family. Frank, played by T Troy Kotzer in an incredible performance. As the best supporting actor, Oscar should definitely go to him, and, he, and I'm glad it did. While sailing, we also meet Leo, the brother of the main character, played by Daniel Durant, and the main character that can talk and sign named Ruby, played by Amelia Jones, who is in high school with her best friend Gertie as she has a, and by she I'm talking about Ruby has a crush on Miles as she gets picked up by Frank we also meet Ruby's mother Jackie played by Marley Matlin and they go to the doctor's office to not have so that the doctor tells them not to have sexual intercourse for 2 weeks which is an embarrassing subject but I really like these people as a family and their character arcs are beautifully done, and again, Troy Kotzer should win, most definitely deserves the Best Supporting Actor trophy. Ruby signs up for music class, and we meet her teacher, Bernardo, let me see if I say this right, Villa, Bull, Villa Lobos, forgive me if I said that wrong, as the other students sing happy birthday to him, as it's his birthday that very day, but Ruby tries to sing it, but she runs out scared and walks to the woods by a creek, and sings the song beautifully, as Amelia Jones has a beautiful voice, but Ruby is shy to sing in front of the public, despite she can sing, and the script is beautiful, as you can relate with the characters as much as I can, even though it feels like a Hallmark TV show, sure, but but I'm, I'm buying it. The Rossi family struggle at the sailing business, at their corporation wants to put something like, for $800, which is more than what they make in a day, but not just them, but other sailors around them, as they don't make much money, as they don't, as they might not have a choice, but to sell the boat they sell on the, and the writing here is tremendous, while Ruby wants to go to college to sing for her life, and wants to escape her family, and we'll find out later in the film, and the movie tells the audience, slow, the audience slowly as this is a movie about following your dreams with or without your family's approval. Meanwhile, music class, they learn in music class they learn to breathe as an exercise, and Bernardo trains them to sing while breathing, which is a great advice, by the way, folks. And Bernardo pair up with Ruby and Miles as a duet, and after school, Ruby goes to work, and Leo sells some fish. For 275 when another person is making 300 cooking in the sun while cooking in the sun and it's beautifully acted as these actors work very well as the characters and the chemistry on sign language is a brilliant idea back in music class bernardo practiced ruby and miles do it as they sing a love song to each other and bernardo advises ruby to apply for singing class at berkeley college of music as the screenplay by director Sion Heater is very well done. Ruby asks Jackie about chorus class as Jackie doesn't want Ruby to do that, but the family wants her to interpret as she's an interpreter at best. Meanwhile, Leo goes to a bar and gets in a bar fight and meets a woman who texts him named Audra as they instantly fall in love and i'm thinking this that was quick and it's reminding me to go back to frozen except they don't get married on the day they meet but they fall in love but they make love when they first meet which is a little cliche i'll say but i'll accept it one last time but no more after this movie Ruby and Miles practice their duet and overhears Frank and Jackie having sexual intercourse despite the doctor said not to do so and talk with Ruby and Miles about how to have sex and to put a condom on his wiener. And please don't make me say the other word because this is not a sex ed kind of movie, which is embarrassing but kind of humorous. 
The next day at school, Ruby figures out Miles told everyone about their parents having sex and gets teased about it as she's pissed at Miles and goes to Bernardo's house to practice singing without Miles as she's successful with, which is great dialogue, but not by the people singing, but the people who can talk in this movie. Ruby attends a meeting about how they're not getting paid and the other sailors will fight to be on the sea and start their own business and double the cost, which is a dangerous thinking for finance reasons, I'll say. But they get an idea of handing out flyers while ignoring Miles and practice music without Miles running late. And she runs late for singing practice three times in a row. And this movie is very well shot and very well made. Miles confesses his house was boring and while he likes what Ruby's family has in the household. While on the weekend, Ru Ruby is forced to do an interview for the news while Ruby is late for the fourth time. As she goes to Bernardo's place and he's posted at Ruby as she comes to his classroom for how bad she felt. And the choices being made in this movie are very good, I'll say. And the example will come in the ne up in the next segment. Ruby tells her family she wants to go to college for singing purposes, but her family is reluctant as they want her to interpret for them. And Frank and Jackie talk about what if Ruby fails and if, what if she's gone and is super worried about. As the next day, a new interpreter named Joanne, who can talk, drives Leo crazy. But I get the impression she doesn't know they're deaf as they get stopped by the Coast Guard. But they don't hear them and get arrested. Meanwhile, Ruby jumps into the creek with Miles and swims with her as Ruby forgives Miles after a while and have a brief romance that is beautiful to watch. Again, very Hallmark Channel movie looking kind of romance, but moving on. The Coast Guard suspends Frank's license to be at the sea and they force Ruby to be the interpreter and they go to court to pay a fine as they don't have an interpreter unless it's Ruby as she accepts it, but Leo can't accept it as he goes out without coming home and the dilemma works very dramatically well i'll say for that scene as leo feels left out of the family while jackie talks with ruby about how she's doing the right thing for her family yeah i'm not believing that but eventually we have to go off on our own at some point ruby finds leo as he brings up she can sing which is a special for anybody and says some rather harsh words like we were better off before you were born which is heartbreaking while the family attends ruby's singing concert and while they cannot hear anything everyone as it turns out is impressed with ruby's singing voice after the duet between ruby and miles and i love how we hear the point of view of the family as they can't hear anything as it was a very smart choice Bernardo meets the family for the first time, and he tries to say nice to meet you in the sign, but says something rather inappropriate, which I'm not going to say for a PG-13 rated movie. But it was funny as Frank responds almost the same way, which is an interesting choice for the movie. Not the greatest, but interesting. Frank tells talks with Ruby as he, we, he wants to hear her singing voice, and he, as he does from her neck, Frank wakes Ruby and the family up to go to Berkeley for an audition as, and as they put her on stage and we learn Miles choked on stage. They leave the family out as Ruby goes to the stage and the family sneak into the back of the stadium. And as Ruby is about to sing, Bernardo comes out and helps her with the piano and she sings with the family watching from the audience and the electors allow it and... Later in life, Ruby gets accepted to Berkeley and spends one last time at the creek with Miles and says and says her goodbyes to her family as we hear briefly from Frank saying goodbye to her daughter. And the climax had a beautiful message, and at the end of the day, it makes me want to learn sign language, which I have yet to do, by the way, folks. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 9.0 out of 10. This movie is absolutely magnificent as the performances are tremendous, including Trey Kotzer, who should get, who did get the supporting actor trophy, which great job for him. And the screenplay does a fantastic job as the at the characters as how much they're a loving family. 
The writing has an unbelievably great time with us connecting with these people while the movie is well shot and very well made. And it is a beautiful movie to watch as well as beautifully acted. And the movie has its humor and it's funny. And at the end of the day, it's a great film to watch as it makes me want to learn sign language. If you love Hallmark Family, or no, not Family, but Hallmark TV, sh which I never could get into, but this I'll make an exception. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for the review of Coda. And until then, speak sign, people. Speak sign.